What's up world? Today we are going to focus on the TOEFL writing, specifically the TOEFL integrated writing task and how to do it, which involves reading, listening, and writing. So let's get to it. Hey, my name's Mike, but my students call me Teacher Mike. I've taught English for the past seven years from Thailand to Hawaii to Washington, D.C. I've taught exam classes, business classes, and general English classes, and I pretty much love it all. So sit tight and let me share something with you. Okay, let's talk about what you need to do. This task is a integrated task, meaning you have to combine information from different sources which means you have to do different things. First, you have to read a passage on an academic subject. Then you have to listen to a lecture, a small lecture, on the same academic subject. And finally, you have to write an essay that requires you to combine information from both the reading passage and the listening lecture. Also, remember, because this is an academic integrated essay, there's no opinion. Unlike the independent task, this one requires you to only use the information you have and not add your own opinion. Now let's talk about the types of questions that they might ask you. These questions fall under three basic categories. First, they could ask you, how does the listening add to or support the reading. Second, they could ask you, how does the listening contradict or cast doubt on the reading? And third, they could ask you, how does the listening differ from or contrast the reading? Do you see a pattern with these questions? Basically, they're asking you to answer a question that requires you to compare the listening to the reading. How does the listening do this in comparison with the reading? You see? Now be careful because there is a difference between a question that asks you, how do these two things differ from each other? And how do these two things contradict each other? A question that asks what's the difference is only asking what information is different. A question that asks what is the contradiction is asking you how do these two sources of information fight, oppose, or challenge each other. And again, there is a time limit. 20 minutes. So it's shorter than the independent task. They give you time to read and then listen and then you get 20 minutes. So those two tasks are not included. And then the word count. So here we are looking for about 150 to 220 words. So half the length of the independent essay. How much is 150 words? Well, it's not that much. If you write this out on a piece of paper, it's about half a page. So it is called an integrated essay, but think of it as just a couple of paragraphs. All right, so there is a little summary of what you need to do for the TOEFL integrated task. Let's go through an example together. Okay, now we're going to read a short passage from an anthropology class. Exciting. So I'm going to put up a slide with the passage. Go ahead and pause the video and give yourself three minutes to read the passage. Okay, here's a tip. Did three minutes seem like a really long time? In teaching my TOEFL classes, I've noticed it is a long time. And a lot of times my students finish early. 
So what can you do in that extra time? Do we do this? Do we do this? Or do we do this? <laughs> if you answered yes to any of these questions, no. A better use of your time would be to take the main points from the reading passage and write that on your scratch paper. To show you what I mean, here is an example of what you could do on your scratch paper to organize your notes. So here you see I've set my paper up with two sides. One side for notes on the reading, one side for notes on the listening. That way all my information is on one page, which saves time. Because the reading passage is so short, you can just take the main idea from each paragraph, write down those ideas. These ideas will come in handy when you have to compare them with the ideas from the listening. Now we're going to listen to a small lecture on the same topic. It is super important that you take notes during this listening. You have one chance to listen to this. In the test, you can go back and look at the reading, but you cannot listen to the lecture again. Even if you are not understanding what is being said, write down as much as you can, because when the listening is over, if you don't have anything on your notes paper, you have nothing to compare with the reading. Ready? Okay, here we go. Listen and take notes. All right, now I'd like to talk about the Kava root, which is something you should all be familiar with from reading the passage you did for homework. Specifically, I'd like to talk about how the treatment of the kava drink has changed over time from ceremonial drinking to a more relaxed, social type of drinking. Of course, traditional cultural ceremonies involving kava still exist throughout the Pacific, but drinking kava has become a type of social activity without religious events or ceremonies to go along with the drinking. For instance, let's talk quickly about some cultures that have slightly changed the way people use and drink kava. In places like Fiji, kava drinking is a popular informal social activity. Sometimes groups of friends, typically male, will get together and drink kava from late night until early in the morning. Here, there is no special ceremony happening, but the physical setting, a group of people sitting on a mat in a circle, remains the same as it does in more traditional settings. In Hawaii, kava drinking has also become a more commercialized activity, with annual kava festivals and kava bars that are open to the general public. There are also stores that sell the drink along with other Polynesian goods and foods. However, these stores also contain more mainstream items such as things you would find in most convenience stores. Overall, the kava drink has different social functions, and studying one of these types of functions is what you'll focus on for your next assignment. Okay, how was it? Good, I hope. Now, if you have all your notes on one piece of paper, now you're saving time. See, you don't have to keep going back and forth between your listening notes and the reading on the computer because you would be rereading on the computer looking for information. Now that we've done the reading and the listening, let's compare our notes. On one side of your notes, you should have information about the reading passage. Then you should have information about where kava is used. And finally, you should have information about the ceremonial uses of kava, or the traditional uses. The listening covers information about how kava use has changed over time, 
from traditional uses to more informal uses. We heard that kava is consumed in Fiji for more informal social activities. Whereas in Hawaii, kava is also a commercial activity and there are festivals for this special drink. All right, now let's talk about the question. With these two samples provided, here's the question TOEFL could ask you. How do the ideas presented in the listening passage differ from the ideas presented in the reading passage? You have 20 minutes to write your response. Now, you can use the same types of planning strategies as you did for the independent task. So let's keep the planning short, concise, abbreviated. Take one to two minutes to plan, about 15 minutes to write, and about one to two minutes to edit. The benefit to this timing strategy is it keeps your writing clear and organized. If you have a plan, then you know what you need to write, and you know where you're going. Now that we have our notes, now that we know how to use our time efficiently, let's talk about the essay and the information we need. The introduction. This is not the same as the introduction for the independent essay. For the integrated essay, you only really need one to two sentences just to give background. For example, for our kava passages, we could write, the subject of these academic passages is the kava drink, whereas the reading discusses the ceremonial use of the drink. The listening passage discusses more informal use of the drink. And that's it. Now for the body. This is the most important part of this essay. This is where your biggest focus should be. And remember, this is not an opinion-based essay. You want to tell the reader what is in the reading passage, but only enough so you can contrast that with the listening. Our question is, how does the listening differ from the reading? So you have to tell the reader what's in the reading passage first. Here, you want to be really, really careful that you only give enough information from the reading in order to contrast that with the listening. What a lot of people do is focus on the reading and they tell the reader what's in the reading, all of the details, but they focus less on the listening and the task here is to answer a question that requires you to compare both. After you give just enough information about what's in the reading, then you take the listening and write about what's in the listening and how that's different from the reading. The body could be one bigger paragraph or it could be two smaller paragraphs as long as you have the information I've just discussed in the body. And then the conclusion, yay! The conclusion only needs to be one or two sentences to summarize the answer to the question or what's the main difference between the two passages. Here's an example conclusion for our essay. The coffee drink has multiple uses. Some uses are ceremonial, as stated in the reading passage, while others are less formal, as stated by the professor. And that's it. Your conclusion can be as simple as that. So let's review. This task combines three smaller tasks, reading, listening, and writing. For the reading, spend your time reading, but also spend some time taking notes on the main ideas. Organize your notes and take notes by paragraphs because there won't be that many. You also want to keep your listening notes organized and write down as much as you can, even if it's just words. For the writing, 
Follow our little plan. A couple minutes for preparation, about 15 minutes to write, and a couple minutes to revise. Save time in writing by keeping all of your notes on the same piece of scratch paper. Focus on that body paragraph. Your introduction and your conclusion, those can be very short. For the body paragraph, only summarize what you need to from the reading in order to compare or contrast. Don't just focus on the reading. That's why this is called integrated, because you have to use all of your information. And here's our last tip for today. Keep looking at the question. When you write information, ask yourself, does the information I am writing help to answer this question? Is it necessary? Oh, that's it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, guys, that's it for our video today on the integrated task. Our next video is going to focus on some common grammar mistakes, but also how to use formal language in the integrated essay. Again, I'm Teacher Mike, and if this video helped you, like it, comment below, or subscribe to my channel and let me know what you'd like to see next. Thanks! Peace out! I'm Teacher Mike, so... <laughs> I'm Teacher Mike. If you, oh, if you like this video, <laughs> I can't remember. What, what did I say the first? <laughs>